Welcome back, my friends of Applied Math. We're going to look at daily lesson 39 today, and we are going to be talking uh, normal distributions and relating it to z-scores and percentiles here. So I'll be refer referencing the note sheet, and then also we have a standard normal table for you here where we are going to convert z-scores to percentiles. So the big uh, kahuna here, what we're looking at today are what we call normal distributions. These are bell-shaped curves. If I were to list all uh, observations here within a data set, that the data would be distributed with most values near the mean and fewer and fewer values far away from the mean, both above and below. So... This is kind of what we say, hey, you know, if we talk about grades uh, in, in school, you're going to have a few people with an F, few people with an A, a lot of people in that average C range, um, and then, you know, a little bit uh, fewer with the B and Ds, and then, as we alluded to, much less with the Fs and As. So you will see some uh, professors in college uh, grade uh, off the bell curve. And, you know, it is what it is. So let's talk about a little bit here how uh, we can, um, you know, utilize bell-shaped curves in order to compare values to one another. So I have an example here with a mean of 150. So my average value in this data set is 150 and a standard deviation one sigma of 10 units. So that means if I'm one standard deviation above the mean, I'm at a score of 160, two standard deviations above 170, three above 180, one below, 150 minus 10 would be 140, negative two times 10, negative 20 from 150 is 130, and then three standard deviations below would get me at 120. So the rule under uh, bell-shaped curves, if you think about the area underneath the curve, if you're within one standard deviation of the mean, so that's kind of this area here, you are going to cover 68% of all distributions within give or take one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of all distributions are going to be within negative 2 and positive 2 within give or take two standard deviations of the mean. And then finally, almost all, 99.7% of all distributions are within positive 3 or negative 3 standard deviations of the mean. So that covers almost all possible um, observations within that data set. The other item we're going to talk about today are percentiles. So if you want to compare yourself to other people in a data set, you can figure out the percentile at which you lie. And if you're at, say, the 80th percentile, what that means is 80% of the observations lie below where you're at. So if you're at the top percentile, the 99th percentile, that means 99% are below you. Uh, so that is how percentiles work. So we are going to have the item here called a standard normal table. I'll give you a copy of this posted on Schoology. You do not have to memorize these uh, values. That would be darn near impossible. But what I do want you to be able to do is uh, be able to use this table to help you find the given percentile or percentage of values below, or we'll talk about in the next lesson, uh, scores above. So if I have a negative z-score, I'm going to use the left side of the table, and a positive z-score, I'll use the right side. So a positive z-score of 2.0, I'm going to go to the positive half and scroll down to 2.00. So what this tells me is positive 2.0 will have a percentile of 0.9722. So making that a percent, I would say 97.22% 
of all scores would be below a z-score of positive 2. So this whole area here would be 97.22% going all scores below. Negative 1.5 z-score, so I'd be right here at 135 if I go back to my prior example. So I want to find the area below 135. So negative 1.5, I'd go to, on the negative side, negative 1.50 is 0 0.0668. So as a percent, that would be 6.68%. 0 0.55. 0 0.5 and then going over 5 places on my hundredths, 0 0.7088, so 70.88%. Negative 0 0.77, so I'm going to go negative 0 0.7 and then all the way over to 7 in my hundredths, 0 0.2206. Again, this is not very exciting, but this will help you when we get to word problems next lesson. Positive 1.72, is 0.9573. So 95.73% would be below. And then negative 0, so I'm going to go negative 0 0.05 would be 0.48. One, so 48.01% would be below. All right, we're going to work backwards here to find the z-score that corresponds to the top 10%. So I need to find the z-score that's closest to 0 0.900. So again, looking at my table, I see a 0 0.8997 at 1.28. Seven. So 1.28 would be the z-score that is closest to top 10%. Top 20%, 0 0.8, 0, 0, 80%. Closest to 0 0.8, 0, 0, 0, is a 0 0.7995, so 0 0.84. That would be the z-score. And then top five at the 95th percentile, 0 0.9500. All right, we are honing in. So this one we have a 0 0.9495 and a 9505, so 1.64 or 1.65. Either one is fine. So either one would be closest to the um, 95th percentile. And then top half. If you're in the top half, you're going to be right in the middle, so your z-score would be a zero average. So 0, 0.0 would be your z-score. Have a little fun with your table here. We'll see you soon.